As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm giving you a studio tour to show you some of the things on my studio shelves. And today, I want to show you this rock. Is it a rock? Why do you have a rock on your studio shelf? Because this rock is from the brook right in the middle of the Valley of Elah. You say, what's the Valley of Elah? That is where David killed Goliath. And when you go to the brook, you find it is filled with rocks just like this. And 1 Samuel chapter 17 tells us David reached down into that brook and picked up a rock. It was not a tiny little pebble. It was a rock like this. And the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel 17 verse 49, And David put his hand into his bag and took thence a stone. It wasn't a pebble. It was a stone. And he slang it and smote the Philistine in the forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine. Wow. Verse 51 says, Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of the sheath thereof, slew him and cut his head off. But David's victory began with a little stone just like this that he pulled out of the brook, the creek, right in the middle of the valley of Elah, and that's where I got this stone. And when I look at this stone, I think about God's amazing ability to help us use whatever we have in our hands. It may look insignificant to you. I'm sure that when that Philistine saw the stone, he laughed. But when that stone entered into David's hands, David was empowered by the Spirit of God, and that stone became a mighty weapon. And if you'll use what God has made available to you, take it in your hand and release your faith and allow the power of the Holy Spirit to energize you. What is in your hand can become effective. It can become a mighty weapon. And that's what I think about when I see this stone. And that's why it's on my shelf. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Hey, this is Rick Renner. Thanks for turning on your device and letting me come right into your space. It's Thursday. We're nearly to the end of the week and what a great week it's been as we've been studying the symbols of the Holy Spirit. Have you enjoyed this? If you've enjoyed this, would you please write to me? I would love to hear from you and know your comments and to know if this program is making a difference in your life. And if it is, then why don't you become a partner to help us make a difference in somebody else's life? There you are, every day listening and listening. You've probably even been thinking, you know what, I need to be a partner with this ministry. Well, let's take action. I believe the Holy Spirit may be speaking to you to help take this same teaching to somebody else. If it's been a blessing to you, please help it to become a blessing for somebody else. And the moment you become a partner, well, we're going to begin to pray for you. When we call people partners, we really mean they're partners with what we are doing because Denise and I and our team, we can't do this by ourselves. We can do our part, but we need other people to do their part. And together we are partners to take the teaching of the Bible to the ends of the earth. And when you become a partner, we send you Denise's little book called The Gift of Forgiveness. It's a small book, but my goodness, the testimonies we've had about this book, people that have been set free as they've received forgiveness and given forgiveness, they have walked out of spiritual prisons. This is a powerful book. We give it to everyone who becomes a partner because we want them to be free. And we also send them my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone, How to Survive, Thrive, and Overcome in the Midst of Difficult Situations. The back of the book says the battle is about to get personal. If you haven't found out yet, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, but you have everything you need to overcome him. You do. And by the way, if you need prayer, also write us with your prayer request or call us right now. We're waiting to take your call. We believe in prayer. Our team is really trained to pray for you. We abound with testimonies of people 
whose prayers have been answered after they've called and we've put our faith together with them. And if you need prayer, we're here for you and we want to hear from you. And we're offering you right now my series called Symbols of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. It's based on all of these wonderful programs. It's just filled with insight about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And it comes with the study guide. And by the way, on our website, we've got a lot of study guides. You ought to go there, renter.org, to the store and see all the study guides that are there. By the way, we're also offering you my book called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit and my book called The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. But today we're going to cover the next symbol of the Holy Spirit, which is wine. So far, we've seen that in the Old and the New Testament, number one, the Holy Spirit is portrayed as anointing oil more than 200 times in the Bible. Number two, we saw the Holy Spirit in Psalm 133 is portrayed as dew. Number three, we saw in Joel chapter two, the Holy Spirit is depicted as rain. Do you need the rain of the Holy Spirit? God wants to give you rain in the proportion that you need. Then we saw that Jesus in John chapter 7 likened the Holy Spirit to a divine river. Then we saw in Isaiah 44, the Holy Spirit is likened to water, which God gives to those that are spiritually thirsty. Then we saw in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, that Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and fire. And in Matthew chapter 3, and in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit appears as fire. Fire purifies, fire cleanses, fire empowers. The Holy Spirit comes like fire. We also saw in Matthew chapter 3, the Holy Spirit comes like a dove. He describes the gentleness and the tenderness of the Holy Spirit. But then we also saw in Luke 24, 49, that when the Holy Spirit's power comes, it comes like clothing. We literally are clothed with power from on high. Then we saw in John chapter 3 and Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit moves like wind. He moves like wind. And then we saw in Acts 2 verse 38 that Peter describes the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to us. How unfortunate that people have never unwrapped the gift. They have the gift, it's in them, but they've never explored it. God wants you to explore everything that's in the Holy Spirit. Then we saw... The Holy Spirit is our sealed. He is our earnest. In the last program, we saw the Holy Spirit is like glory. The Holy Spirit is likened unto light. And today we're going to come to number 15. Number 15 is the symbol of the Holy Spirit as wine. He is like wine. So grab your Bible and let's go to Acts chapter 2. And when you come to Acts chapter 2, the disciples have been in the upper room. And in the upper room, they have experienced so much. The Holy Spirit came like fire. The Holy Spirit came like wind. All of these things happened in the upper room. And when they came out of the upper room, the Bible tells us they came out of the upper room onto the streets speaking in tongues. Many people mistake in this. They think that the 120 disciples were really speaking natural foreign languages. That is absolutely impossible in that text because there was 120 of them. They were all speaking simultaneously, but the Bible says everyone in the crowd, everyone in the crowd, each heard them speaking the wonderful works of God in all of their separate individual languages. Hmm. How can you hear multiple languages all at one time coming from the mouths of people? And the answer is very simple. The miracle didn't happen in the mouth. The miracle happened in the ears. Over and over in Acts chapter 2, the listeners said, How do we hear them speaking the wonderful works of God? How be it we hear them? We hear them. Over and over it says we hear. When they came out of the upper room, they were praying in tongues just like me, just like you. But by the time it reached the ears of the listeners, a miracle took place, a work of supernatural translation, and the listeners heard it, heard it in their own languages. They were just speaking in tongues, but they heard it in their own languages. When I was a university student one day, I'll never forget, I went up to a group of people who were foreigners and I was young, and I was willing to try anything. And I thought, you know, I'm going to speak to them in tongues and see what happens. 
I just begin to speak to them in tongues, just my normal, regular tongue. And I had an Acts chapter 2 experience. Those people heard it in their language. And in fact, they even asked me how I had learned their language and their dialect. I didn't know their language. I didn't know their dialect. And I was just speaking in tongues. But they heard it in their own language and in their own dialect. That is precisely what happened in Acts chapter 2. And the listeners were so amazed by the behavior of the disciples when they came out of the upper room that they accused them of being drunk with wine. And Peter answered in Acts chapter 2 and says, These are not drunk with wine as you suppose. And here we find that when the Holy Spirit begins to work marvelously in your life, it so changes your behavior that you begin to act differently. Those listeners even thought they were drunk. Now, when you go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, the Apostle Paul elaborates on the Holy Spirit as wine. Listen to what he says. Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to begin in verse 17. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Stop. In this verse, he says you need to understand what the will of the Lord is. I know that you want to do the will of the Lord. Well, what is the will of the Lord? He's going to tell us right here. He says, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And then in verse 18, he says, and be not drunk with wine where in his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Here is the will of the Lord. He's telling us the explicit will of God for my life and for your life. And the first thing he says is be not drunk with wine. And believe it or not, in Greek it is a negative. It is a very strong prohibition. It means stop getting drunk with wine, which really infers the Ephesian church was drinking too much. They were drinking. They were drinking to the point of intoxication. Well, why do people drink? They don't drink usually just because they enjoy the taste. Many people drink because they like the effects that they feel when they drink. They become intoxicated. It's amazing that when a person is sad, if they drink wine, they can become jolly. You know, when you drink, it changes your behavior. It changes what you feel. It changes what you see. Think how many drunk people see things that are not really there. When people are intoxicated, they do things they would never normally do. Shy people get on top of a table and dance when they're drunk. They'll sing. They'll do things they would never normally do. People usually drink because they want to feel different or they want to feel the effects. Well, when you come to this verse, Paul literally says, stop it, stop it now. Stop getting drunk on wine. You don't need that. He said, this is excessive. And then he gives them an alternative. But be filled with the Spirit. And in this verse, we find that when the Holy Spirit fills us, there is what I call the intoxicating effect of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit fills us, just like alcohol can affect a person, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it changes the way you feel. It changes what you see. You begin to see things you normally would never be able to see. It really enlivens your faith. It changes the atmosphere. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, a shy person becomes a bold person. An afraid person becomes a fearless person. You are transformed when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. I call it the intoxicating effect of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, when you continue in this verses, Paul tells us what happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, this person is transformed. They're singing. They're making melody in their heart to the Lord. Why? Because they're under the effect of the Holy Spirit. Giving thanks always unto God for all things, rather than complaining and griping, suddenly your heart is just filled with thankfulness. And then it says, remarkably, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are so intoxicated with the Spirit of God, you're so changed, you're even happy to submit. 
you need me to do that, I'd be happy to. You want me to change? I would love to change. My friends, a person who behaves like this is under the intoxicating effect of the Holy Spirit. And the Apostle Paul uses the illustration of wine to describe what happens to us when we're filled with the Spirit. But there's something else very important. In verse 18, he says, not, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. The Greek actually says, Be ye being continually filled, which means when it comes to us drinking of the Spirit, we need to learn to be professional drinkers. We need to pull up to the table, grab our Bible, open our hearts, and every day drink of the the Spirit. We're told in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 that God made us to drink of that one Spirit. God has made us to drink of the Holy Spirit. Wow. But when people drink wine, they're controlled by it, they're changed by it. And likewise, when you drink of the Spirit and you're filled with the Spirit, you're changed by it, you're controlled by the Holy Spirit. A person that is filled with the Holy Spirit is a person who is controlled by the Holy Spirit. But wait, wait, wait. Jesus also said something very important about wine and wine containers. Jesus talked about vases and Jesus talked about wineskins. Now, let me tell you about the containers that were used during the time of the New Testament to hold wine. There were vases and there were wineskins. Vases were used for fermenting and storage. Wineskins were used for pouring and they had to continually be refilled. God does not intend for us to be vases. Now today I brought a big vase, and this really is a replica of a first century vase which would have held wine. That's really what this is. And I want you to look at the size of this. It's very heavy. In fact, it is so heavy, it took two men to carry this into the studio today. If you had wine in a vase like this, it was for storage. It was for fermenting. You couldn't walk around with a vase like this because it was impossible. It was just too heavy. God never intended for us to be vases. Think how many churches and how many individuals received a marvelous infilling of the Holy Spirit. God moved in that church and they've never shared it with anybody else. They've just contained it like a vase. Over the years it ferments, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, but it's never been shared with anybody else. They've just become a storage for what God did at one time, and guess what else? If all you do is hold it, you have no capacity to receive anything more. That's all you have. But God did not intend for us to be vases. God intended for us to be wineskins. Wineskins were small. They were about this big. Actually, I have one I wanted to show you today and I can't find it. But wineskins were made out of leather and they were to be filled and you were to take your wineskin with you and you would pour it out to share with others. And because it didn't hold much, it had to be refilled over and over and over again. And Jesus used the wineskin as an illustration of what we are supposed to be. God never intended to us, us to be a vase that just holds what we've received and no capacity to receive anymore, that God intended for us to be a wineskin, that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit and we would take that infilling of the Holy Spirit everywhere we go to pour it out, to share it with other people. And by the way, when you've poured it all out, you need to be refilled. You need to be refilled. You can't refill a vase because it's full. But a wineskin needs to be constantly replenished with a new filling. And that's why the Bible likens you and me to wineskins. I think that is amazing. Wineskins were to be refilled again and again and again, but a wineskin could become old. And if it wasn't renewed, it would become unusable. Jesus said this in Luke 5, verse 37. No man puts new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. In verse 38, new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. However, there was a way to renew an old wineskin. Let me use the example of me. I've been walking with the Lord for decades. Well, 
I don't want anybody to look at me and say, oh, he's an old wineskin. He can't hold anymore. God can't use him anymore. So I have to do what is necessary to remain pliable. I have to remain pliable so the Holy Spirit can continue to use me. I want to always be like a new wineskin that God is ready to fill. Well, here was the problem with old wineskins. Old wineskins were affected by the wine because the wine had chemicals which would affect the interior of the skin. The skin would begin to stretch. Sometimes the skin would begin to dry and it would begin to crack. And that's why people usually replaced an old wineskin with a new wineskin. But they don't have to be replaced. If you're willing to go through the process required, you can take an old wineskin and renew it. Most people were not willing to do it because it took time. And the process was pretty laborious. It could be painful. But an old wineskin could be renewed again and again and again and remain usable. Here's what they had to do to renew an old wineskin. First, they had to really scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it. Then they beat it. They beat it in order to make it soft again. Then they would wash it and wash it and wash it. Then they would heat it. And by heating it, they shrank it back to its original form. And if a wineskin was submitted to the process of scrubbing and beating and washing and heating and being shrank, even an old wineskin could be refilled and could remain usable. I can tell you from my own life, for me to continually be used, I have to be willing to submit to the dealings of God in my life. I don't want to be a vase. I want to be a wineskin through whom God pours life into other people's lives. But for me to remain pliable, usable, I have to let God deal with me. He's got to scrub me. God washes me. Sometimes he brings discipline into my life. God fixes me. God renews me. And if I'm willing to go through the process that renews me so I can be used, I can be used for the rest of my life. How about you? Do you want to be refilled? God never intended for you to be a vase. A vase holds something old. God wants to constantly give you new wine and through you, he wants to pour that life into other people. I want to read a verse from Psalm 51, verse 7 and verse 10, where David was praying. And David said, Purge me with hy hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, listen to this, and renew a right spirit within me. If we are willing to submit to God's dealings in our life, God will continually renew us so we can hold the wine of the Holy Spirit, be controlled by it, be affected by it. The intoxicating effect of the Holy Spirit will change our perspective of everything. And because we're a wineskin and not a vase, God will use us to pour out to others and then he'll refill us and refill us and refill us. That's why the Apostle Paul said, in Ephesians 5, verse 17, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye continually filled with the Spirit. That's God's will for my life and for your life. The Holy Spirit, my friend, is like wine. I'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to pray for you to receive a brand new infilling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to the church, and the Bible is jam-packed with insights into the person, power, and work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible provides a long list of symbols of the Holy Spirit that are powerful and important for you to understand. In this 10-part series, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, Rick Renner expounds on these symbols and how they are used throughout the Bible. Rick covers the person, power, and work of the Holy Spirit, the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, the rich relationship with the Holy Spirit that is awaiting you. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20, you'll be so glad you invested in this powerful series. In addition, you can also order Rick Renner's book, The Holy Spirit in You. In this book, you'll learn that the secret to sustaining strength is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. This life-changing book can be yours for $15. You can also order the book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. This book will give you a new understanding of the gifts of the Spirit and how you can operate in the supernatural power that God has given you. 
It can be yours today for $10. Don't miss this special offer, this series, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, and the books, The Holy Spirit and You, and why we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call and get these powerful resources today. My name is Joel Renner coming to you from Moscow, Russia, and I want to say thank you to all of our ministry partners. Your support has allowed us to help special needs children in Russia. Because of you, we are able to help children with disabilities. Because of your gifts, we are able to give them attention and care. We're even able to provide outings for their parents where they can enjoy their children as a family with no worries or concerns. Your gifts have lifted their burdens. Several times a year, we put on a children's musical that are based on Bible stories so these children can learn about God's Word and His great love for them. Parents and grandparents who accompany them fill the church in anticipation for this outreach. When you give to Renner Ministries, you can bring joy to these children and give them the hope of God's Word. Will you consider joining us as a partner today so we can continue helping these beautiful children? Without your support, we simply cannot do this. Please call or go online right now. When generous, caring people like you give, we are able to give these children with special needs the care and attention they need so desperately. Please call us or go online to winner.org. Through your donations of any size, we can continue to make a huge difference in these children's lives. Wow, we have learned so much today about the Holy Spirit working like wine in our lives. My friends, God wants you to be a wineskin. God wants to fill you. He wants to pour through you to others. But this is just one symbol of the Holy Spirit out of 15 that we've covered in this amazing series. And I want you to order the series. It's called Symbols of the Holy Spirit. It comes with a study guide. You should listen to this and listen to this or share it with a friend or a Bible study group. It will really bring them a new understanding of the Holy Spirit's work in their lives. We're also offering you my book, which is called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit and the book called The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And if you need prayer, please contact us. We want to pray for you, but I want to pray for you right now. Just throw open your arms and your heart. Father, you want us to be wineskins. I ask you, Father, to fill us anew with the Holy Spirit, that we not be vessels that just contain it, but, Lord, that you pour through us to others. And as we give to others, we ask that you keep filling us again and again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, it's been so good to be with you today. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to wrap up this teaching. But until then, remember... Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.